if you are using those matrices, like for instance, the amount we spent on R&D, the number of patents which are granted both abroad and within India, uh, you can see that these figures are actually showing an increasing trend. Although I must say that in the context of R&D, the overall gross expenditure on R&D as a proportion of uh, India's GDP has not shown much increase during the last several years. Uh, but one has to take the, this with a pinch of salt because what you have seen is a big compositional change within the R&T in terms of its performance. It has moved away from government to industry and within the industry, the private sector industry. And private sector R&T expenditures have actually shown tremendous increase during the last 20 years or so. So, and also the number of patents both filed in India and abroad have also shown an increase. So if you use these indi uh, indicators, what one sees is that uh, the te technological innovations are actually on the rise in India. What you have in India is a service-driven economy where much of India's GDP actually comes from the service sector where you don't have a tangible output. If you look at the health services sector, for instance, you have a number of instances of innovations. For instance, in the delivery of uh, health services in the country, you have serv surgical procedures for uh, cardiology. So as a result, you can say that innovations are actually on the increase, but these are concentrated in certain specific sectors. Now, if you take the technological innovations, these are actually concentrated in sectors such as pharmaceuticals, such as automotive industry, and so on. And uh, so you can't say that India is becoming much more innovative uh, over the last 20 years. Certain specific sectors within India are becoming innovative over the last 20 years. In the pharmaceutical industry itself, this industry has actually developed sufficient capacity, a technological capacity to develop new chemical entities. And uh, Indian pharmaceutical firms are coming out with new chemical entities, which are then being licensed to Western multinational companies. So I, I think uh, pharmaceutical industry is one of the most innovative industries in, in, in India. As I told you, the share of government in the performance of warranty has actually gone down. Right now, it accounts only for about 66% of the uh, total expenditure on R&D or the gross expenditure on R&D. It used to be as high as almost close to 80% um, or even 90% about 20 years ago. So there has been a steady erosion in the share of government, governmental R&D. Now, much of this governmental R&D is actually focused in uh, nuclear energy, space, defense, and uh, in health uh, and in agriculture. If you look at space research, where a fair amount of uh, money is actually being spent, a lot of the output of space research is actually used for uh, delivering services at village levels. For instance, communication services, even educational services at village levels. So I think uh, there has been a greater market orientation of government l and over the years. And also there's been a greater emphasis placed on using the output of uh, government l and for civilian use. So I think that's a very welcome trend that has actually taken place. A group of researchers from India and China went about measuring the number of foreign R&D centers in the two countries. And we found that in India, it has actually increased to about something like 750 foreign R&D centers right now. And, uh, and, and this is increasing on a, day, on a daily basis.